Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. Today we're talking about INFJ lookalikes. So this is really cool. Actually, what I found is INFJs have a set of five different types. They can sometimes look alike depending on what situation they are in. So first of all, of course, INFJs look the most like INFJs. No, no other type has as much in common with you as another INFJ. If you're an INFJ, you share the same cognitive functions, values, interests, and attitudes to the same degree as most other INFJs to some extent. Of course, there are differences individually between each INFJ, and so you'll still have a lot of things that you don't agree with or relate to. Now, more importantly, number two, the most likely INFJ lookalike is the ENFP. INFJs look and resemble ENFPs more than any other personnel type. And this is because they have similar interests and similar values to a similar degree. That means when you look at intuition and feeling and thinking, INFJs and ENFPs, they are very similar in how much they value intuition, how much they value feeling, and how much they value thinking, with some small differences. INFJs and ENFPs, they share a lot in common when they talk about what's important to them, what they like, what they want to do, what their goals are, what they value, what's important. The only difference is they have slightly different cognitive attitudes. That means the INFJ's intuition is slightly more introverted and the ENFP's intuition is slightly more extroverted. But this is, of course, once again, just to a degree. And that's why, number one, INFJs will look like and mistype the most as ENFPs. Number three, INTJs. Of course, naturally, INFJs and INTJs share similar cognitive attitudes. Now, the way you'll notice that these two types are different is because INFJs are a lot less controlling and a lot less judging. INFJs prefer to adjust to the group and what everyone else wants and to find a compromise between two different wills and two different sides. INTJs prefer to stick to and set a goal and then work with that decision and then finalize that decision with as little compromise as possible. So this is a very stark difference between these two types. And beyond that, INFJs and INTJs are different on the spectrum of feeling and thinking, where INFJs are on the feeling side of the spectrum and INTJs are on the thinking side of the spectrum. That means INTJs, they tend to value discussion and conflict and disagreement and having your own opinions and uh, working on your own projects and have your own goals and sometimes allowing yourself to be a bit selfish and to be a bit more goal-oriented and be a bit more project-minded, focusing on your own career, your own care, uh, get, uh, goals and your own ambitions first. INFJs tend to be a bit more cooperative, benevolent, seeking everyone to be happy, working with everyone's needs in the equation. So these are the two differences between these two types. Number four, ENTPs. INFJs and ENTPs are very similar when you look at intuition. That means INFJs and ENTPs have a very similar sense of intuition. They use intuition very similarly. Their intuition is kind of similar when it comes to how introverted versus how extroverted it is, both types being very strong in both preferences both having a very ambiverted intuition. INFJs and ENTPs are also interesting to compare because while ENTPs tend to be a bit more on the thinking side, INFJs tend to be a bit more on the feeling side. Still, the differences are not as strong as they are with INTJs. INTJs being a lot more thinking and a lot more judging, ENTPs being a bit more cooperative and a bit more easy to work with. INFJs and ENTPs have a lot more of an easy time discussing and throwing ideas with each other. There's less judgment, less disagreement, and more cooperative back and forth. I prefer this. No, I prefer that. Okay, let's find a compromise. And that's what makes these two types so interesting to study together. Then we can talk about INFJs and ENFJs. And a lot of people would think these two types are the most similar, but that's not the case. INFJs and ENFJs are not the most similar. Now, they do have a lot of similarities, but for example, ENFJs, they are usually more extroverted, much more extroverted, and ENFJs are on the side that is uh, a lot less intuitive. That means INFJs and ENFJs, they have a disconnect when it comes to different interests. Uh, ENFJs value action and going out and a bit, are a bit more resilient, a bit more studious, a bit more working with the details, 
while INFJs are a bit more wishy-washy, abstract, theoretical, uh, creative, let's try something, let's see what happens. And that means these two types, they tend to have a different approach and different way of doing things. Beyond that, ENFJs are drivers and INFJs are makers. And ENFJs are a lot more judging and INFJs are a lot more type nine, a lot more mediating. Now, INFJs and INFPs. INFJs and INFPs are very interesting because a lot of people will tend to say these two types mistype a lot as each other. This is because people type based on the dichotomy. So when you look at and assume that INFJs are equally introverted, intuitive and feeling, but only different in terms that one is judging and one is perceiving, that's not the case. INFPs are a lot more perceiving while INFJs are a bit more on the middle. So INFJs are people that are a bit more of a balance of uh, what everyone else wants and what you want, while INFPs are a bit more focused on themselves and their own goals and their own identity. Beyond that, INFPs are a lot, a lot more feeling than INFJs. That means when INFPs talk about values and needs and emotional connection and relationships and who they are and their identity, that is so much more important to them than it is to an INFJ. An INFJ has a lot more detachment on these topics, and while it is important and while they care about it, they can find it straining to talk about it so much and to get so much into an emotion. INFJs often preferring to deal with emotions but not feel it themselves. Finally, we have the ISFJ. And while ISFJs and INFJs have very similar temperament, I mean, both INFJs, INTJs, and ISFJs are incredibly calm people. ISFJs, they are a bit more on the middle on sensing and intuition, and INFJs are a lot more strong in intuition. So an INFJ's intuition is very high, and ISFJ's is a bit more mixed. So that means you can talk with an ISFJ and have a bit of a similar understanding. You can find the ISFJ to be creative and curious to some extent, just not as much as you are. Now you also find that the ISFJs similarly cooperative, okay, what do you want, what do I want? Only the ISFJ is a little bit more controlling and has a little bit more, I want it this way and I think we should all work through my approach. So while ISFJs are a bit more set in their ways, INFJs are a bit more open-ended. Now this makes the most likely lookalikes for the INFJ. If you have any types you agree with, let me know in the comments down below. Which personal types do you relate to the most and connect with the most? Are they the types that I mentioned here or are they some other personal types? Thank you for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.